Shad Adversity. Ratings. I'm Shad, and welcome to my video series where I have a look at the classic fantasy races. And uh, with my study and you know knowledge, I've been able to accumulate on historical medieval weapons. I see if the classic weapons that are attributed to the classic fantasy races, medieval fantasy, so dwarves, elves, and all that stuff. I see if their you know classic weapons that they use are best suited to their physical characteristics. And if not, or even if they don't have any standard weapons that they use, what weapons would be best for them based on those characteristics? And in this video, we're going to be looking at orcs. Well, to begin, we need to figure out what are the standard physical characteristics of orcs because there's so many different medieval fantasies and different interpretations, stuff like that. And this is always a tricky thing. So I've just basically got to try and look at them all and then get a general gist-ish thing. Uh, so there are some fantasies where the, this analysis is not going to be fully representative, but hopefully it'll give you insight to be able to apply to more specific fantasy settings. So orcs are generally ugly. That's a bit unfair. I'm sure orcs think us humans are ugly, but to a human, an orc is ugly, unless you have more uh, ta different tastes. I guess they could be refined or um, obscure, weird. If it floats your boat, that's fine. Now, okay, so yes, they look different. Do they have, sometimes they have tusks, but okay, generally they're taller than humans, so they can be massively taller or a little bit taller, but let's just say taller and we'll go with starting off with say 10 centimeters to maybe even a foot. And they're generally stronger, physically stronger than humans. Now, in terms of the fantasies that I, pausing as well, like I'll get back to the different fantasies and stuff. This analysis is also really applying to the Urakai out of Lord of the Rings. In Lord of the Rings, a goblin and an orc are basically the same thing. There's probably more specific kind of details that uh, you Lord of the Rings fans all, uh, you know, pull me up on. That That's fine. But generally, as I understand it, but they're basically the same thing. So uh, I, I basically consider orcs and goblins in Lord of the Rings as goblins and the Urukai as the orcs of that fantasy setting, because the Urukai are more representative of orcs in other fantasy settings like Dungeons and Dragons, and Warhammer and, the, you know, the, the big fit medieval fantasy uh, products and genres, world settings, all that stuff. Interesting. The orcs kind of uh, almost similar to uh, elves in the sense that I have not really seen in terms of fantasy, movies, video games, also uh, role playing games and whatnot. Orcs are not represented to having any significant physical uh, detriment as opposed to humans. No slower than humans and no less dexterous. Sometimes they're far more resistant to injury, especially like if you look at Lord of the Rings, how you know they get stabbed through the, the gut and you're like, oh, I don't care, I'll, I'll breathe on you. <laughs> Very key strategic move there, the power of bad breath. The secret as to why Aragorn was immune right there is because his breath was actually just as There is a detrimental quality that orcs generally possess as opposed to humans and other fantasy races, and that is, of course, in regards to their intelligence. Orcs in many settings, not all, might I add, but it seems to be most, because orcs are a monstrous creature, and so this really hap is applied when orcs are a monster and not a player character race, and they would then be given less intelligence. In Dungeons and Dragons, they are consistently given less intelligence if you have a look at their standard stats in the monster manual. Half orcs, sometimes, depending on what edition, commonly, like in the most recent editions, no, they're not given uh, less intelligence, but we're looking at full-blooded orcs. Warcraft is a bit of half and half, same with Warhammer. Elder Scrolls, no orcs are about as, are inte as intelligent as other races. The interesting thing about intelligence is that, yes, this would affect how competent a warrior they are, because intelligence and using proper tactics, when to faint, whatnot, all that plays a very significant role in how good a fighter they are, but this video isn't assessing how good are orcs at fighting, it's what weapons would they most predominantly use, 
and I don't think intelligence, unless they're full-blown completely stupid, and they're not generally considered to be as stupid as, like, animals and stuff, that they would use different weapons that are not better suited to their physical characteristics, not their mental characteristics. I do think orcs are intelligent enough to figure that out. In most settings, they are. Like Lord of the Rings, the Orakai, and other things like that. They're smart enough to know the best weapons to kill other things with because they like killing and they're generally good at it. So because of this, intelligence isn't really going to affect the weapon choices that are best suited to this fantasy race. The more significant elements to consider are physical characteristics, and in regards to physical characteristics, orcs really are superior to humans. So this kind of brings back to my thoughts about elves. I don't generally like fan but actually, for, for orcs, I think it works a bit better than uh, elves. But elves are gen player characters and heroes, uh, and if you want a good story, you need proper limitations and conflict for the heroes to overcome. And so if you make them a Mary Sue where they're good at everything, it doesn't really work. But for monsters, okay, giving the bad guy more powers, that can make a story far more interesting. And so this is why orcs, being so much better and superior to humans in a physical sense, can work really well in many fantasy settings, because People should regard them as pretty darn dangerous. They're orcs, okay? Monsters should be more dangerous. They should be scary. Like, that's the best type of monsters. That when you're faced with them, the hero, he knows he's got to have to work to you know, beat these creatures. Which is why it can kind of defeat the suspense when you have a hero run into an army of orcs and just hack them apart like they're all useless, weak creatures. Like, these orcs are actually stronger than humans, okay? It shouldn't be that easy. For some reason, I don't know. The, the, uh, the uh, hordes of enemy monsters are incapable of reaching the same skill levels as the heroes because we always want the heroes to be able to defeat the hordes of the monsters. Even though we want these monsters to be stronger than the heroes so they're more scary, the heroes can always just trounce them like they're lemmings. So, coming back to orcs, best favoured weapon sets. Kind of what we were saying with elves, I think more predominantly culture is going to have a larger impact in their favoured weapons than necessarily physical characteristics. Uh, now when I was saying that, uh, elven, elves with the bows, uh, there were other weapon sets that did suit characteristics with elves, <clears throat> uh, but with dwarves, not dwarves, Orcs, they already have a reach advantage because of their height, so they don't necessarily need to rely on weapons with reach, but if they did use weapons with reach, then they have that even more so. So I think they'd have a preference to two-handed weapons, battlefields, and other like things like that. But in terms of sidearms, orcs almost universally are an aggressive warlike you know, race, even though they can use proper tactics and stuff like that. And uh, as I was saying, I don't think it's fair to say orcs are universally have a bloodlust rage that they can't avoid in combat. I think they can fight with their equal competence as regular humans, but they are more aggressive. In every fantasy setting, orcs are about fighting or if not raiding, but certainly a warlike species. So because of that, perhaps they, uh, their average weaponry sidearm would actually be battlefield level weapons. For, for in regards to history, it's, it would be weird for a human to carry around a shield for personal defense because it's so cumbersome. And honestly, it's, it, we, you carry a weapon for self defense just for the off chance, okay? Most people in history weren't attacked by bandits. It happened, but the average person probably, you know, there was a lot of people in the medieval period who lived their entire lives not being attacked by bandits, contrary to what fantasy movies and what stuff teach you. But they still carried around a sword as their sidearm for self-defense, just in case. That may be that off chance. Living in a society that was far more warlike, okay, where it was, there was much higher chances of you getting into a fight, okay, you would want to be as well equipped and well armed as you could. It's simple logic. If uh, you go to a the medieval period, a human, and you say, you know what, you are going to be attacked by bandits today. It's a guaranteed fact. I've had a vision of the future, or I come from the future, whatever. You, you are going to be attacked by bandits. All right, what is that person going to do? Uh, you're just going to grab their single sword and be as armed as they were before? No, of course not! They're going to get as much armor, they wear full plate armor. Of course, they'll probably, you know, avoid it, like lock themselves in their house. Say so they couldn't do that, but they, they knew that we're going to get into an actual melee weaponry battle. They would grab as much armor as they could. Full plate mail, big battlefield weapon, give them as much advantage as possible against the opponent. Because when you know you're going into battle, that's when you equip yourself to the full. 
And that's, of course, where we see battlefield standard weapons. But battlefield weapons are different to self-defense weapons because of convenience. You can't wear full plate armor 24-7 or carry a big massive pole axe. That's why the sword was so prominent in history. But if your society lived in a society where fighting and battle was far more regular, okay, I think for an orc it would be a normal thing for them to walk, wear armor as their normal clothing, okay? And big battlefield level weapons as their normal armor. So we're talking pole arms, all right? We're talking great swords, we're talking war bows and stuff. The very significant result of this, very significant, is that the sword would probably be less of a prominent weapon amongst an orcish culture than amongst humans. The sword is a perfect weapon for self-defense. That's why it was so popular and prominent throughout so many periods in history. But as technology improved, and specifically armor, the sword is nowhere near as an effective weapon against armor as big pole weapons. Pikes, halberds, pole axes, maces, morning, well not, yeah, morning stars, but war hammers and the like, okay, those are full-on battlefield weapons. And the sword is a more general, versatile weapon, okay? And so, with orcs, I think the swords, because of that, would be le far less prominent. Uh, maybe they wouldn't even exist to orcs. They're, like, they're useless because orcs, they're fighting all the time, and they do wear armor and stuff like that. And so for the orc, for the weapon for sword defense, yeah, battlefield weapons. So we are talking pole arms. And so the flavor of the orc would be, you know, pole axes or halberds, something with a big axe head. Something with a big axe head. Hey, they suit. They really suit orcs. And if you're going to say Danax, a pole axe is basically a Danax on steroids, okay? Pole axe all the way, over Danax. And maces and warhammers. Like proper warhammers. Not fantasy warhammers, proper warhammers, okay? Now, when I said that there was not a weapon that played into uh, the orc's physical characteristics, I think I spoke too soon then, because there is a weapon that uh, would uh, benefit massively from the orc's increased strength, and that is the bow. Now, the bow has come up a lot already. We, we talked about it extensively with the dwarves and elves, and now the orcs. And in, in all the other videos, I've mentioned one of the this more significant attribute for war bows, specifically the heavy big war bows, is strength. And orcs have strength in abundance. So the poundage of the like average war bow for an orc, the, like, the orcish bow, right? Would it could be much higher than the average humans. And the, oh boy, the advantages that you're getting that. Range, penetration, uh, those two facts alone, if they're significantly greater, have huge advantage. I mean, war bows, Standard level war bows can't penetrate plate armor. In some cases, at very close range, they can puncture, but nowhere near enough to actually kill a person, okay? But the orc bows, my, maybe they could get to such strength that they can penetrate plate armor, and my goodness, if they could, that's almost like having a gun, okay? That's like having ballistic weapons in a medieval period, because a ballistic, ballistic weapons could penetrate plate armor. Not all plate armor, not the early ballistic weapons, they had more trouble. The latter ones could penetrate much easier. But if you're dealing with those issues in a medieval setting with medieval armaments and stuff like that, ooh, that changes the game completely. Like fighting orcs, if you knew your armor was going to be useless, if they could penetrate armor, changes the game completely. And then there is an issue of range. Gosh, my goodness. If orc archers, all right, and they, these bows would be thick, powerful, big like war bows that put English longbows to shame, okay? If they can get additional range on their opponents, they can rain down death on enemy armies before the enemy army even thought they were in danger. That, that's crazy. You see, the issue with uh, doing that regularly is that for you put, to put yourself in range of the enemy generally puts yourself in the enemy's range as well. And so you can kind of hit each other. But if these orcs had such, like, they would have such significant range that they could put themselves and just be at like, The tactics you could employ would just be crazy. They'd get in there, send in a huge volley. The enemy would get half slaughtered. They might not even see where it's coming from. They try and pursue. The orcs would just run away and shoot again. And, and if the orcs keep out of range, they could wipe out armies without losing a single guy. Deadly level war bows. Yeah. Orcs and bows. M a match made in heaven, or if you're going to fight them, perhaps a match made in hell. Hell for you, because you're going to be in hell quite well. If you've been bad, maybe they'll send you to heaven. So, 
Is it, is it a horse? Oh boy, orcs and bows, big one. But that's really it, that, I think that's it. So these are my conclusions. The best medieval weapons for orcs would actually be battlefield weapons. Because of orc society, they would have far less use for swords because a sword is a backup, okay? It's a backup weapon for self-defense for the off chance that you might get into it. But if you knew you were getting, getting into a fight, you would use a bigger, more serious weapon that's made for the battlefield, and that's what the orcs would use in their everyday lives. So battlefield weapons for the orcs, pole arms, big weapons, great swords even. Great swords suit orcs really well. And the war bow, but bigger war bows because they're greater strength, that's just crazy. Those are my conclusions. I uh, thank you very much for joining me on this uh, consideration, this analysis. I hope to see you again, and until next time, farewell.